welcome back to What Are You Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the GW Tiger P. It's the tier 8 German SPG located on Eastbourne of Airfield. And this one is under the command of Angelina75 of Olymp. And she's in the competition. Yes, yeah, she's trying to get a better result than Talon did in his GW Tiger P. Game on. Well, Angelina's opted to have the 21 centimeter howitzer. We know it's that one because, of course, it has no muzzle brake at the end of the barrel. It's uh, capable of doing 900 alpha, 53 millimeters of pen, 11.4 meters on the burst radius, so it's a big one, and 12 and a half to 31 seconds of stun. And the standard reload. 44.1 seconds, but Angeline's got it down to 36.13, and she's loaded. Now, it's one of the slower arties in the game, so it really does help if you put a turbo on it and configure it so it can go a bit faster than normal. Otherwise, you um, tend to wait forever for the arty to reach a firing position. Now, there's a good spot around about here in line with the base of the um, uh, that hill there because that means you can shoot up the alleyway towards the enemy tanks as they try to move forward. The alternative is to actually move them to the right and try and shoot in at them. And also these guys down the far end, you can see there's a CS-52 list. Good spot. Look at this. Straight away, she's dialing in. She fires. 78 hit points, but it's the stun that might make the difference. And look at these two over here. They're overlapping each other, which is making them a perfect target. And Angelina's keen to put a shell in there and kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, we can see the list at the moment, but we know that that GSR is still there. The G-Saw is uh, alongside him, and they're jockeying for a spot. Angelina's just moving about a little bit at the moment. I think she might have engaged cruise control by mistake. Oh, but she got a direct hit. Yes, she was on cruise control. Yep. Accidentally hit the keys. It does happen. When you see a reticule moving about a little bit, jogging about, and you're trying to aim, that's usually a sign that you're actually moving and you don't really want to be. Of course, you want to get a nice tight reticule, but she did get a direct hit. And my suspicion is it hit the list rather than the G-Saw. It'd be nice if it hit both of them. And in fact, I suspect the G-Saw did take a big hit because, of course, it's got very thin armor. Rounds out on the bat chat. Oh, she killed him. She wiped him out. He'd already taken some damage, but she just got a kill shot. And now she's moving to change position to avoid count battery. Enemy RT in this game is also a GW Tiger P. Now, as you may realize or may know, there is a competition between Angelina and Talon as to who actually gets the weekend lion. Whoever wins, they get to sleep in and the other one has to get up and look after Remy. Good shot. Don't know if it damaged the target, but I suspect the G-Saw 1010 did take something. It's been a long-standing competition and the members of What Arty Noobs actually quite like it because it is kind of rivalry. And every now and then, um, Talon actually puts up pictures of the breakfast that he prepared. Um, and Well, he's got the nickname The Bacon Chef because of course he does produce some lovely bacon. Uh, and uh, it's it's quite amusing, of course. Why not? They treat it as a, a nice, friendly competition, and I think we all enjoy it. And, of course, the whole purpose of the competition is to get better at playing arty, as well as having a bit of that familial gaming. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a little rivalry going on here. You see, um, in the main, Talon was the master and Angelina the student, but it's kind of role reverse now because Angelina's got very, very good at arty and she now almost surpasses the martyr. Well, sometimes she does because she manages to get ace tanker games out of it 
and he doesn't. Dialed in on the G-Saw. Oh, lovely, 303. And she's getting stun assist as well. Oh, she got the rest of it. Lovely. We're four up on the enemy at the moment. This is a good game. We've got adequate defense stand and south to stop the enemy moving up in that area. They do have an SU-130 PM somewhere around there, but we do have that countered with a Borsig. Our ELC Evan 90 is actually be doing a sterling job keeping the enemy alight. Okay, couldn't dial in quickly enough for the Iron Arnie. But he's occupying that corner. And he took a hit. 353. Of course, the GW Tiger P never existed. It's a nice thought by Wargaming that uh, they would have used the spare hulls from the Tiger P, the Tiger Porsche, to actually make a, a GW, a Schutzwagen. But I don't think it would have actually happened in the end. I'm certain that they would have used them regardless for the Ferdinand, because they were more in tune with the Ferdinand being a, a, a rock-solid uh, tank destroyer or an assault gun with an 88mm gun. Of course, they were actually devising an RT based on the 17 centimeter main gun. That was already well in the hand with the GW Tiger, which is the tier nine RT in this game. When the British arrived at Hausenbeck, where, or near Paderborn, to uh, capture the trials area where all of the advanced tanks were located, Oh, fantastic shot. She killed the Borsig. The ELC would have picked up the spotting assist off that one. But he was right alongside when the shell went in there. Oh, she's doing well today. In fact, it looks like the next target's probably going to be the G-Saw 1008. Now, that's the same one we believe that actually was alongside the CS-52 Liss early in the game. Unfortunately, the IS-3 on the enemy team just took out our ELC. There's the G-Saw using the rock for cover. Making it very difficult for us to plant around in there. There you go. Rounds out. Hello. That's a direct hit. 390 right on his rear. That's a slap on his posterior saying, don't you dare. Now, Angelina might actually benefit from moving slightly further to the uh, north. But in fact, actually, she's going to go south. We don't have that many tanks between her and the enemy. There's a T-32 up to the north side of the airfield. But Angelina's probably spotted the fact that there is a gap now, which the enemy could thread their way through. We do have an SU-130PM moving into position, but... It is a kind of liability. If she stays where she is, that those guys could move. Okay. Looking down the same line as she did before. Oh, no, that's not so good. The SU-130 PM just got wiped out. But he, before he died, he did get one of the enemy as well. I think that was the Iron Arnie going down. So, there's five left on each team. There's the enemy SU-130PM. He's a one-shot. This is at range. Long shot. Enemy armor is he, she got him. <laughs> she wiped him out. So, that's three kills now for Angelina. There's only two enemies left. They've only got the G-Saw 1008, and we know where he is. And the GW Tiger P. I think the game is all but over. And now the T-32 is moving. And the other guys in the south. It looks like this game is going to be over momentarily. Angelina will probably only get one more shot at the enemy. There's the enemy RT. Which one does she go for? Is she going to go for the enemy RT? Well, she does. In fact, the GW Tiger P 
just kills our Type 59 with one shotgun. And Angeline's going to return the favor. Rounds out. 386. Makes my one shot. I think the Ball Seek or the Vipera are going to get the kill. It was the Ball Seek in the end. And that just leaves the G-Saw. The guy she slapped on the rear in a non-affectionate way. Yep, the T-32 did take a hit from that guy, actually. He's lost a lot of hit points, the T-32. I think the G-Saw might have uh, been giving him a few lessons. But our guys are coming up from the south now, so it won't be long before the cavalry arrive. And even if that G-Saw did decide to come over here and try and get the RT as a last consolation prize, He's going to find that Angelina is more than able to handle herself and defend herself if necessary. Our teammates are capping, forcing that G-Saw to come back. Angelina's decided to head south for the winter. Just in case that G-Saw has been spotted. The G-Saw is around. We just saw her. Yep, she's trying to get out of the way as quickly as she can. So he did come south. He was trying to take out Angelina. Only a few seconds left to go. If he doesn't try anything now, he's not going to be able to. And Angelina will escape now because there's only one second left. And that's it. Game over. Here's the end of battle results. And that was the first class tanker for Angelina 75 of Olymp in the GW Tiger P. She managed to get a bruise the middle for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, she got 12. And a win eight from that game was 3,817, which is super unit come standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, Angelina got the second highest damage on her team, but not the second highest damage overall. The highest damage went to the Skoda T56 on her team, 3,387 hit points. Second highest damage went to the IS-3 on the enemy team with 3,014 hit points of damage. And the third highest damage, well, that went to the 7032, the 122, with 2,599, but Angeline got fourth place on damage with 2,459. So it just goes to show if you keep pumping those rounds out, it really does rack up the damage. And eventually you always get those top spots on the game and people's um, heads get turned and they say, hang on a sec, that was Zilati with a top score there. Um, yeah, they suddenly realize what they're up against when they actually are playing against top RT. And I see that so many times from what RT Noobs members, that they, they are really playing a good game and getting high results. When it came to kills, we can see the top scorer was the GW Tiger P on the enemy team. Yeah, he got a shotgun right at the end of the game. He picked up four kills in that one. Hippie Slayer. Second highest damage went to the IS-3 on the enemy team and also to Angelino, three kills apiece. Two kills went to the Type 59, the TS-54, the SU-130PM, and on the enemy team, their 7032 managed two kills as well. So very good to get second place on this one uh, after getting fourth place on damage. When it came to base XP, Angelina's in second place again. The high scorer being the Skoda T56 with 1,094, the only player to get over 1,000 base. But just behind him is Angelina with 994, just so close to getting over 1,000. And 821 went to the Ilse Evan 90, and I think he got that because he was doing a nice bit of spotting in that game. Angelina fired 12 rounds out of that game, and considering this is the big gun, um, which does have a much longer reload time. That was a lot of shells to pump out. She was making good use of them. Four direct hits on the enemy. No penetrations, though, but she did get 11 splash. Damage of 2,459, all of it at more than 300 meters. She damaged nine of the enemy, killed three, 
and she got 825 hit points of stun assist off eight stuns. On a free player count, she made a profit of 33,281 credits, including a 30,000 mission completion. And she got 30 bonds out of it as well for another mission completion and 3,976 experience points out of the game as well on a times four day. And she says, I'm really beginning to like this line. <laughs> I think, yes, there is a lot to going uh, on the um, German line. Obviously, the, the American line is fun for a lot of players. And then, you know, the Soviet line. The thing is that uh, each line has their own mystique and their own attractions. And it really would help if Wargaming brought in more artillery lines, uh, say for the Italian or the um, brought some in for the Polish. I mean, there's so many things they could do to bring in these extra lines. And they don't necessarily have to put them all in the same battle at the same time. You can still put the restriction of only, say, three arties on a team. But you just need to bring in more arty from more tech trees and also potentially more premium RT because we just don't have enough premium RT at the moment. There's only two in the game and there should be a lot, lot more because after all, there are still four tech trees with RT in this game at the moment and only two of those tech trees actually have premium RTs in the game. So a very, very unusual that Wargaming is totally missing out on all of that money, huge amounts of money they could earn by selling premium RT. So this game, First Class Bruiser and 3,817, was it enough to beat Talon? Well, unfortunately, no, it wasn't. Angelina um, didn't beat Talon because Talon got a First Class of Bruiser and a higher win eight, 4,489. This is the standard that he set so far, but she came very close to getting it with this game, 3,817, very close indeed. and. Uh, Yes, so she's going to have to keep trying to get another one. But the, the problem is that Talon sent in another replay as well. And I thought, yeah, what better thing to do than put that replay together with Angelina's on the same video. So let's have a look and see what Talon got up to yesterday. And we can see that Talon 1958 has opted to use the GW Tiger P and he's on the northeast spawn of Arctic region, otherwise known as Mannerheim Line. Well, this one, is, this map is um, trying to recreate the Winter War, 1939-1940, which was on the Mannerheim Line, which is in Karelia, the area of um, south of, uh, of Finland. Well, the gap between Finland and the Soviet Union which the Soviet Union wanted to conquer and they wanted more expansion of territory. I wonder where I've heard of that before. Well, anyway, we can see that uh, it actually recreates the winter landscape of that war with all the fortifications that were created by General Mannerheim, who wasn't German, he was actually Finnish. Okay, Type 57. Rounds out. Looks good. Oh, close. <laughs> I gave him a nice warning. That's another 173 hit points. Now, as you can see, Angelina and Talon have both opted to have the big gun, the 21 centimeter. It does have slightly longer to reload, but it does have a bigger footprint as well and better penetration. Talon's actually firing from quite a high position. And that's not a liability as such because it does uh, enable him to move about quite a bit on the enemy. Okay, lovely target there. That's a uh, Carnarvon Action 10. Just around the corner. He's just taking a lot of damage. And now he's taken more. And he goes down. That was a kill shot coming in from the T832, which means he's got stun assist as well. That Type 57 is also a one-shot now. He's only got 49 hit points left. He won't last very long. All Talon has to do is plant around in there and he'll expire from fight, let alone the actual splash. Yes, the sight of that explosion going off will probably scare him out of his tank. Okay, he's marked the spot. 
If it goes too short, he will actually hit the ridge line. Okay, can see the target now. He's going to let it dial in again because he did move the vehicle just momentarily. The GW Tiger. Oh, yes, he does. He gets him. <laughs> so he's got a kill now. It was only uh, a small amount of hit points, 49 hit points, but it was a kill. Yes, this RT does have a very narrow arc of firing, actually. It's only 5 degrees either side of the center line, 10 degrees in total. It means that if you need to change the aim just slightly, you might have to dial in the reticule all over again. Three enemy tanks together then, rounds out, splashes the 274 and stuns the others. I think he's decided now it's safer to move a little further down so he doesn't get spotted. He is getting a lot of stun assist, but unfortunately we lost our teammates that were blocking those guys from coming in. And that means they're going to start flooding into this area very shortly. But uh, before they do, we're going to put a few, few shells in their direction. And he's moving much further down than normal. But I think he's decided he's better off down here because, he, of course, he's got this uh, set of bushes and, of course, the tree line, and he can shoot at the enemies coming in. Oh, they lost one. They just lost the tank. We're not spotting the guys up north as well. Our guys are holding back. They're not trying to look for them. We're looking to the south, and... Oh, my God, we just killed a Shrek! He got a blind kill on the Shrek that was up on the lookout area. Wasn't spotted, but now he's slotted. He's out of the game. He was just too close. The shell landed and splashed him. And that big footprint, that huge footprint, I mean, it is enormous. It's 11.4 meters radius. So it's 22 meters or nearly, nearly 20 uh three meters in width and so yes he landed a shell next to the guy and it just splashed him and killed him okay the enemy are still trying to make their way in but look at that the mal breaker i think he is going to be stoppable this time rounds out well he's stunned and now he's dead and he got the stun assist there's only five enemies left. They've basically gone straight through the guys down in the south. Our guys are now starting to flood through the north. And it's only their defenders that are left. Now they are going to put up a fight. They just killed our BZ-176. But we've got two tanks there together. One of them, an Object 274A. I'm going to plant around on him. Rounds out. Here we go. Lands right next door to him. And he did take something because although the other one didn't take anything, the 274A did. And we're getting stun assist off that one as well. So it's a good game so far from Talon. Two kills. A blind kill on the Shrek. What a funny one. It happens sometimes if, you, if he knows. He must have understood that there was somebody up there. And he plonked the round in and it worked. There's somebody there as well. And there's the enemy RT. And he didn't last very long. That was the M40, M43 dying. There's second to last, the Panther Spy. And we get a kill. Oh, we're taking too long to load. And I think that Panther's going to die. He's going to pop. And the Panther goes down, and here's the last remaining enemy tanker, Shrek. He just took some damage. He's hiding in the corner. Bounce out. Here we go. Oh, and the shell arrives a second too late. But the game is over, and it is a victory. Here's the end of battle results, and that was another first-class tanker for Talon 1958 of Olymp in the GW Tiger P. He managed to get a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine. 
And he got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. And that's even though he got two kills in the game. I think putting those shells in where he actually sh stunned three tanks with one shot really did make a difference because you were hitting multiple tanks at the same time. So let's have a look at the uh, win eight, 2,220, which is very good, but not a Unicum standard. But uh, I think the result speaks for itself. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in this game. That went to the BZ176 on the team, who got 3,540. Second highest damage to Panther 2 on the enemy team with 3,096. And the third highest damage went to one of their Shreks, who got 2,623 hit points. When it came to Talon, he got 1,640 hit points of damage which is actually better than everyone except the last or top two on the enemy team. And he had five members of his own team score above him, which means that he's actually in eighth place when it came to damage. When it came to kills, though, we can see the top scorers were the T832 and the Panther 2 on the enemy team. Both got three kills. Two kills went to the Pajetto 54, the Carnarvon, and to Talon. And nobody on the enemy team managed to get two kills. And in fact, we can see that only five members of their team actually got kills at all in that game. When it came to base XP, he's in fourth place because the Progetto 54 got 1,088, the only player to get over 1,000 base. 953 went to the BZ176. 929 went to the T832. And, and, and Talon managed to get 917 in fourth place. Of course, we should actually mention the Saladin actually managed to get attacked Sniper in that game. He's the only one, other one who got a medal in the game. Nine shots were fired, less than Angelina, but he got one direct hit on the enemy and no penetrations, but 11 splash. So he splashed more tanks than he actually fired shells. So he was hitting multiples. 1,640 hit points of damage, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage 9 in the enemy, kill 2. And he got 1,495 hit points of stun assist off 9 stuns, and that got him the first class tanker. On a premium count, he actually made a profit of 105,184 credits from that game, and that includes a 105,000 mission completion bonus. So his actual um, uh, profit from the game was only 184 credits. Not a lot, really, but, <laughs> well, I suppose if you take out the uh, uh, mission completion, but it is a bonus. So he did actually complete a mission. So he did take away 105,184 and he took away 5,502 experience points as well on a times four weekend or five times four day. Oh, dear. Let's have a look at the end results then. OK, first class bruiser and a confederate. Remember his previous score? That was a first class and a bruiser. So he, now he's got the medal as well. And that medal means that he has actually has made the uh, or advanced the target. So even though he got less on the win eight, his score has actually improved. Now Angelina will have to get either an ace tanker or she'll have to get a first class, a bruiser and two medals in order to beat Talon um and if she gets only one medal she has to get a better win eight than talon does now that's not that that's not a big ask she can do that but i've seen angelina get ace tankers and i know she knows how to do it the question is will she get an opportunity to given the uh, state of the uh, na server at the moment will the other teams provide the necessary stun assist that will get angelina a high score well, we'll just have to see. We still got a full day to go, but uh, this replay is going to be going out on a video very, very shortly. I'll try and put it up later today and we'll get some more videos from them when they come in. I hope you enjoyed both of those replays. Please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.